Math 31, welcome to section 2.4. We're going to review complex numbers in here. Here's your homework, 1 through 53 every other odd. And our learning outcomes for this section are that we should be able to plot complex numbers on the complex plane, add and subtract complex numbers, multiply and divide complex numbers, and simplify powers of i. So when you hear me talk about learning outcomes 2 and 3, I want you to see that our four math operations are in here. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And we had talked about these four operations in a previous section. I just want you to see them popping up again. So how do these four math operations play out in the land of complex numbers? All right, and in order to talk about all of this stuff, before we get to complex numbers, I have to talk about the imaginary number i, or the imaginary unit. And it, it's kind of funky to talk about. This is a number that doesn't exist in the real world. Um, but we, we did take a look at what happens in the, in the imaginary world. So we're going to define i to be the square root of negative 1. And in a previous section, I had mentioned the three domain issues that we will run into during the course of Math 31, right? The first one I talked about was where you had a fraction. Ooh, that's not how you spell fraction where you had a fraction and the denominator was zero. Right? We had a domain issue there with denominator equal to zero. The second one was when you had an even radical or an even index to a negative number. All right? And that's what's about to pop up here. If you remember the third one, was when you took the logarithm of a zero or a negative. So if zero or negative um, expression was in the argument, that was a problem. But I want to focus on this one right now because this is the domain issue we're running into when you're in imaginary land. You have an even index, right? And when I say index, it's the number that's uh, right here on the radical symbol. If there's no number there, it's implied to be two for a square root. And then you can't have a negative radicand. And when I say radicand, that's the stuff underneath the radical. And that's exactly what I have here. I have an even index, there's a two, and I have a negative number under that. So that number does not exist in the real world. And we decided to call that i, the imaginary number. So I'm taking an even index of a negative radicand, doesn't exist in the real world, I'm defining it to be i. So if we define i to be the square root of negative 1, then if we apply squaring to both sides of that equation, I square both sides, on the left side I would get i squared, and then radicals and squares, when they're the same power, or I guess I should say when the index here is the same as the exponent here, they're going to cancel. So that would just leave my radicand of negative 1. So i squared is negative 1. Now I'm, I'm going to erase all of this just so we see the original definition of i, and we have that there. So i is the square root of negative 1, i squared is negative 1. And through solving, if I was going to square root both sides of this, right, if you remember, let me just go backwards here, if I square root both of these, right, I would actually get plus or minus i here equaling the square root of negative 1, which is why we note that negative i is also a square root of negative 1. So i is a square root of negative 1, and negative i is also a square root of negative 1. And again, I'm going to erase all of this because we're going to use these definitions in example 1, and I want them unmarked when we use them. Okay, so with that, now that you know what the imaginary unit is, let me move this page up so that we have all of example 1 in view. And let's talk about complex numbers. So complex numbers are slightly different. They involve real numbers and imaginary numbers. So if a and b are real numbers, so these are just constants, then any numbers of the form a plus bi is called a complex number. The complex number of a plus bi, or excuse me, in the complex number of a plus bi, a is the real part and bi is the imaginary part. So technically right here, bi, right, that is the imaginary part of this complex number. So if you think about it as like a giant Venn diagram, if you have complex numbers here, right, you have imaginary numbers in here. So every imaginary number is a complex number, and then it also has some real numbers in here. And there's some overlap, all right? That's not my world's best Venn diagram, so I'm going to erase that. <laughs> I keep erasing a lot of things. But every imaginary number is complex. So here we go. So when I'm looking at complex numbers, right, I've got a plus bi, imaginary part, real part. And both a and b are real numbers. 
So an example of a complex number would be 3 plus 4i. So together, these are collectively making up a complex number. Here's the imaginary part, here's the real part. So there's just a bunch of vocab getting applied to it. All right, so with that, let's take a look at, at these, um, these examples in example one. So it says express the following in standard form. So in standard form it means I wanna get it down to a plus bi if it exists. Again, if it's got no real part, if it's just bi, which it will be for these, then we would just call it an imaginary number. So this is how this works. When you take a look at the square root of negative 16, the first thing you wanna do is address that square root of the negative. All right, so this is like saying the square root of negative one times the square root of 16. All right, so address the fact that you are taking the even index of a negative number. And then you know the square root of negative one to be i, you know the square root of 16 to be four, so this answer is ultimately four i, okay? Now, that's all fine and good, but I wanna just stress on this, that when you're dealing with the square roots of negative numbers, make sure you handle that square root of the negative first before you do anything else. So for example here, I'm gonna look at this and say this is the square root of negative one times the square root of 24. And I know that is just going to be i times the square root of 24. Now I'm free to break down 24 at this point. And if I do that, I'm just gonna use my factor tree here. I'll say 24 is eight times three, and I know eight is two times two times two. So depending on how you learn to break down radicals in a previous math class, I'll have i here times the square root, it looks like two squared. So I have a pair of twos, and then I have a leftover two and three. So the two is gonna hop out of the radical. It's gonna get multiplied by the i because everything comes out of the radical as a product. So I've got two i, and then I still have the square root of two times three left over here, which is great. I can't simplify that. I'm gonna scoot the paper up just a bit so that we can see the rest of my work here. All right. And if you get to the point where you can't take these out of the radical, no problem. So this becomes 2i square root 6. All right. So how this works, again, if you have the square root of a negative number or, or any even index to a negative number, take the imaginary part out first and then apply all of your radical rules as you would have in any previous math class. All right. So with that, we're going to flip the page and we're going to practice this a little bit more. See you in a few. Bye.